Joining us once again, Insomniac President and CEO, Mr. Ted Price. Ted, we were just having a very interesting conversation. I want to get to what we were talking about in a second, but first I have to address uh, Ratchet and Clank Full Frontal. Um, you guys have been doing Ratchet for a long time. It's been incredibly successful, uh, successful for you. We do know that there is a new console generation on the horizon. What made you guys say, hey, we need to start working on Ratchet and Clank Full Frontal, we need to start talking about it right now? We knew fans wanted a taste of the classic Ratchet, so we're going back to classic Ratchet controls, classic Ratchet weapon systems, camera, and we're, of course, adding a few new twists. So we're really excited about what will be delivered soon, and I think it's going to satisfy a lot of the hardcore Ratchet fans who've been with us and grown up with the franchise. You're about to tell me one of those twists. Feel free to expand on that now. Not yet. Stop censoring yourself. Yeah, sorry. Okay, you'll keep doing it. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about something that uh, that I know a lot of people are very excited about, Overstrike. We actually gave it best trailer, I think, at, at E3 last year, uh, but we haven't seen much, and I know a lot of people were disappointed that we didn't see it this year at E3. So w what's the stance on Overstrike? Where are you guys with that game? Uh, well, we've been quiet on Overstrike, mm -hmm. but we've been working our asses off on it. <laughs> we really have. And I think launching a new IP at the end of a console generation is an interesting proposition. It has its pros and cons. And the pros are that when you go to an E3 like we just experienced, mm -hmm. what you see is lots and lots of sequels, and you hear from gamers that they want something new. And so being able to deliver a brand new IP at this point in the console life cycle is very cool. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, the con is that we are going up against franchises that are in their second, third, fourth, fifth iteration. Sure. And so there's a lot of, there are high expectations for any new IP. We've got to compete with all of those games. So we're taking the time to make sure that when we unveil it for gameplay and show it again, it rocks. Right. And I, I know we can expect that from you guys because your games are always amazing. Let's talk about just the challenges in developing a new IP. You were being very candid earlier about the fact that even for a company such as yourself that has these established franchises, you clearly do a great job of creating new IPs. It's really hard to do it, and that's why a lot of people probably don't. Yeah, starting with a blank slate is always intimidating, and there's so many different directions you can go, and we have a very open, collaborative approach at Insomniac, where a lot of people put in ideas, and there's a ton of discussion constantly about what's going to be best for the game. Are we hitting the right market? Is this the right story to tell? Mm -hmm. And we're constantly making things better, but that in itself is a daily challenge to make sure that the, the story we're telling is going to be uh, the, the right one, stand out, the gameplay is innovative, and when you don't have an established world and established characters to draw on, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy sometimes. And I think a lot of us have been so familiar with the Ratchet and Resistance franchises we have forgotten sometimes what a new frontier feels like, mm -hmm. and that's what Overstrike really is for us. Right. And uh, outside of the internal decisions and the internal challenges, what do you think uh, kind of brings a new gamer to a new IP? Like when you guys make something like Overstrike, are there any key elements that you say, hey, this is what we need to do in order to get this audience on board with this game? I, I think establishing a clear vision for the game uh -huh. internally is, is something that always has to be done and that's usually the toughest thing because again you have a lot of people who have different ideas and we all want to make the best game possible and so there's so many ideas uh, making sure they all coalesce into one unique vision is a challenge for every game that we have done since our very uh, since our inception mm -hmm. and talk about the fact that not only do you have this new IP but suddenly you, you now have to reach and you have access to I guess a much broader audience and that you're not a Sony exclusive with this game. Uh, did you did that affect your design philosophy at all, or is Insomniac just you know moving forward the way they always have? Well, that's been pretty exciting. I mean, to be able to be on Xbox 360 as well as PlayStation 3 mm -hmm. was from the very beginning something that got us really pumped. Mm -hmm. And now over the last couple of years, we've been developing brand new technology, brand new tools, and it's really helped with the development process. Mm -hmm. And how does it feel uh, on an internal level? Are you nervous at all that suddenly you, you've really, you put out a Ratchet game, Sony, Sony fans love Ratchet, but are you like, man, I hope that Xbox 360 owners like what we're doing over at Insomniac. Are you nervous about that at all? No. No? No, I, I think we're bringing our expertise to bear. I mean, we're, we're a console developer as well as now a Facebook developer, and we have many, many years of, we think, understanding the console audience and knowing the various uh, console genres that we've been engaged in very well.
So basically, you guys are really smart. You know what you're doing. Don't worry about it, Blair, is what you're saying. I have all the answers. You will see them in the future. Uh, and, and then my final question for you, what do you and Insomniac hope to see in the next generation of consoles? What's the one thing that you really hope they include? I'm sure you already probably know, uh, but the one thing that you really hope to see in the next generation well, I'll, of consoles. I'll talk, first of all, thank you for saying that about Insomniac. We're, we, like everybody else, are constantly... Uh, reevaluating our process, we are always evolving as a company, and that's that's what's so much fun being in this industry. Is we're not never doing the same thing, and that's because the industry itself is like an amoeba. I think constantly sending out tendrils into other spaces that nobody ever imagined, sure. which is why we went into the Facebook space, mm -hmm. but why we're also excited about new consoles and. Where, what's happening to the existing audience. Mm -hmm. So we use that kind of energy the industry has to evolve ourselves all the time. Mm -hmm. But I'll talk about what I'm particularly excited about as a, as a gamer uh -huh. is having immediate access to my games. That's what I want. I mean, I, this, I've got this piece of plastic and metal in my pocket, an iPhone, right, that mm -hmm. I, has trained me to press a button and I have my game. I mean, as a gamer, that's what I want from right. all of my games, no matter what the platform is. So I hope we get there. So someday. you want to beam directly into your brain is what you're saying? Pretty close to that, yeah. Sounds good, man. Big round of applause for CEO uh, of Insomniac Ted Price. Ted, thank you so much for being here. Always a pleasure, pleasure to talk to you, sir.